People often ask me uh, whether it's possible to use uh, some sort of gear motor instead of a brushless motor drill that would be uh, permanently attached to the little Proteus power feeder as a power source. Uh, and uh, the answer is yes, it's possible, but it's more difficult than you might think. Uh, people typically think, oh, I'll just use like a, a DC motor, uh, uh, like a wiper motor. And uh, the issue is that uh, you, can, you can do that and uh, you, to, to get the, the fastest speed that you'd want, it'll work well. So uh, you, gear motors are available in, at various speeds. What you want uh, for, a, for a fast speed, feed speed on a table saw is about 150 RPMs. Basically, uh, you divide the RPMs of your motor by five to get the feet per minute of feed speed. So 150 RPMs is 30 feet per minute. And that's a, a pretty fast table saw speed. And then you can use uh, an inexpensive speed controller uh, described as PWM, pulse width modulation. It's, uh, it's a way of uh, slowing down the speed of a DC motor essentially by turning it on and off uh, very rapidly. And uh, it works fairly well down to you know, close to about half of feed speed, you're gradually losing torque as you're slowing it down. And below half, you'll pretty much uh, not have adequate torque to use it for power feeding. So if you had a, uh, a typical DC gear motor that would be capable of giving you, let's say, 30 feet per minute maximum speed, you really won't be able to go slower than about 15 feet per minute. And certainly for bandsaw use, you're going to want to go slower than that. So you need a sort of a better solution than just a DC motor slowed down by pulse width modulation. So there are two fundamental options. And uh, the first one is available right, right off the shelf as a, as a package that will work. And it's an AC gear motor coupled with a, a high-tech drive. And these are available at various RPMs. The RPM will be the maximum RPM you can get. And then you can slow it down about tenfold. So you could get, for instance, a 120 RPM version of this motor. It will give you about 24 feet per minute feed speed. And you can slow it down to about 2.4 feet per minute, which is pretty good. Uh, so I, I, I like these, and this is what I really recommend for somebody who just can't really, uh, for, for one reason or another, doesn't like the idea of the brushless motor drill, whether it's that they don't want to have to monitor, monitor a battery, or it just kind of looks too weird for them, or they find the, uh, the, speed, control, uh, uh, the speed control switch or trigger to be just too awkward. Uh, the fact is the brushless motor drills work terrific and they're inexpensive and since you want to own a brushless motor drill to use it as a drill, they're essentially free. But I understand that some people may want uh, a motor option and I guess I'm recommending uh, these AC gear motors as the easiest way to solve that problem. Uh, they're, very, they're available on a 15 watt version. The 15 watt version is maybe a little bit uh, underpowered. Uh, if you're doing really heavy work, you might find it might not be adequate. They also tend to generate heat at the very low speeds. Uh, and then they're available in a, uh, uh, at about the same price, they're available uh, in a 25 watt version. It's bigger, it's heavier. These are about five pounds. Uh, by contrast, this is about three and a half pounds. A brushless motor drill like this Ryobi weighs about three pounds. So uh, that's kind of the lowdown. They so these AC gear motors uh, have an on-off switch and then a, uh, a dial for a speed control. And so at the, at the low end, it's feeding at about, about three feet per minute. And that's what that looks like. And the torque is pretty good. I mean, if I, if I work hard, I can slow it down. On the 25 watt version, you really can't even slow it down. So depending on how heavy the work you're doing, you may want that 25. But uh, then you can speed it up. And at full speed, 
Uh, this one is, is uh, 125 RPM, so it's about 25 feet per minute. And these are available on Amazon. They're available on, uh, from a few vendors on eBay. You can also find a selection of these motors with various speeds on uh, the website stepperonline.com. And th those motors stipulate a uh, 17 to 1 uh, slowdown via the control box. Uh, the ones that I purchased uh, from uh, from eBay vendors were really only capable of about a 10 to 1 reduction and they didn't state a slowest speed. So I'm not sure if the uh, the, the ones from uh, Stepper Online are a little more expensive, expect to pay with shipping um, closer to, closer to about, uh, about $90 for a motor. These seem to me to be uh, an amazing bargain, uh, a similar package made uh, in Japan, sold by Oriental Motor, costs over $400. Uh, at various speeds, uh, the 15 watt version will work. 25 watt version is, I would say, more recommended. And there, it comes with the motor and the speed controller and a, and a, a harness that co connects them. All you need to do is provide a, uh, a coupler uh, an eight, uh, rather a 10 millimeter to 12 millimeter flexible coupler. Uh, those are fairly inexpensive. A simple mounting plate basically hangs the, the weight of the motor off of the drill support fork. Uh, the other drawback, there are two, uh, two drawbacks to these. Uh, one, to reverse it, you'll need to relocate a jumper cable on the back. Uh, install it from one lug to another lug. Or you could install what's called a double pole, double throw switch, which would then allow you to reverse it with a switch. You'd have to figure out where, how to mount that somewhere. Uh, it's a, to a toggle switch. The other drawback to these is that when the motor is off or power is completely removed, they freewheel. So it's possible that it can, can come backwards. Now, I don't really think that that's too much of a hazard because the spring pressure is still tremendous. So if you were, if you were, feeding, uh, if you were feeding a board uh, and you were, for some odd reason you were to lose power to the power feeder without losing power to the table saw, I don't really understand how that would happen either. Typically, they would go out together if you had a power failure. Uh, there's still, the board is being held tightly in place by the spring pressure. Uh, but uh, that's yet another uh, advantage of, of the brushless motor drills. Even, even if the battery wears out uh, and, and dies, the, uh, it won't be able to backfeed. The, uh, the chuck acts as a brake, and so you can't feed backwards. There's, there's also uh, a more advanced options prepared for me by an engineer that I connected with uh, who uh, put together uh, an Arduino-based uh, electronic speed controller for a small DC worm gear motor. And this, this motor with, with, tip, with just pulse width modulation control would only be able to go down to half. With this controller, it actually can go down to about one-tenth its speed and have good torque. But it's a, a much more complex option. And so you would need, for a package like this, you would need the motor, uh, your basic speed controller, the uh, Arduino or programmable uh, extra circuit board to give you uh, What's, what would be called encoder control, which would basically be a, a much more uh, intelligent speed control that would keep the torque high. And then you need a power supply. So it ends up being a kind of a big, complex, uh, fairly expensive package. If I was selling hundreds of thousands of these power feeders, I would probably be able to cost effectively put together a motor package that would work well for about a hundred extra dollar cost. But uh, <laughs> I'm not selling anywhere near that kind of quantity, 
and uh, it all again just points to the uh, the excellence of of these guys because there's because these are sold in such volume there's just tons of of uh, excellent uh, engineering poured into the construction of these and and, and they're they're ripped off and copied so you can buy uh, you can buy a brushless motor, 18 volt drill, on Amazon for fifty dollars. That will work really well as your uh, power supply. It's also uh, worth noting that cords are kind of a drag with a power feeder. So the fact that you don't need a, a cord with a brushless motor drill uh, because you're using a battery, I think it much more than offsets the inconvenience of having to monitor battery power. If you have two batteries and and uh, just make sure you keep a spare charge. You'll be able to pretty much power feed all day long, just swapping out your batteries.